We're here at a multiple installation, a multiple facility site here with many CNC's and we're actually going to show one of the machines being installed here with the coolant saver. And we're going to go through the process of which pump to go off, how to tee it up and how it all works as well. So we're going to do a step-by-step -step process, very straightforward. Obviously we've got the full instruction guide here so you don't even have to listen to me, but it's all here as well. Okay, so let's go for step one. Okay, so the next step we're gonna show you is actually the selection of what pump to cut off from. There are always a number of pumps on the machine tool and typically here we have a, a Matsura machine with a number of pumps. The pump we like to come off is the pump that's gonna be running most of the time the machine is on. We also keep away from high pressure pumps. So the standard around spindle pump is a typical pump we'd use. And this pump here, for instance, would be this pump here, as you can see here, and there's the fitting down there is where we're actually going to tee off from. So this pump's running, well most of the time the machine's running, so that means the unit will be working the majority of the time the machine is on. We've then got the fittings which actually come with the kit for this machine will be a three-quarter BSP. There's a T fitting and that's this fitting here. So the next stage now will be before we even get to the undoing of the machine and turning it off, we're just going to seal up the joints ready for it to go onto the machine. So let's do that next. So we've, uh, we're now coming up to sealing the T and the straight together before we go to the machine. So we're just going to show that process of the PTFE around the seals. So obviously we need to do that before it goes onto the machine. Okay, so we're just sealing up the actual unit, half inch BSP thread. Plenty of PTFE tape, we can never get enough of it. Maybe six, eight turns, make sure it's well and truly sealed. We don't want any leaks and having to reseal it again. So just plenty of seal and then make sure it goes around the right way and then we're ready for the next stage. Okay, so now we're gonna do the actual installation onto the pump. What we have here is the around spindle pump on the Matsura and we're gonna actually tee off from this section here. Nice and easy fitting. So first of all, we just obviously wanna undo this hose as we don't, don't want to uh, cause any, uh, cause it to twist. So just simply undo that, you get the twist on there. And now we're gonna undo this section from there. Always worthwhile having a little bit of rag there with you as well. Um, just underneath, just in case there's any leakages. Always a bucket is helpful as well, if you're not sure. Okay, so you can see it's starting to wind out now. This is where it helps to have a little bit of muscle. So we got that bit there, it's not moving. And we haven't got that bit there, not moving either. So we can just simply Wind this out. Obviously, most important thing also is to make sure the machine is off before we do that. That should be step one, that the machine is off. Because obviously we take this pipe off and it's on, we're gonna have a lot of cooling everywhere. So let's turn that one. Okay, so we're ready now to install the T-piece fitting into the, uh, the non-return valve there, or the, uh, the cut off. Sorry about that, you couldn't see that bit. As you can see now, that's nice and tight. And we got that section out there because we're going to actually feed the return back into the sump over there. So we're just gonna pop the, uh, the seal on this bit. Okay, so we put the T fitting and the straight fitting in and hopefully there'll be no leaks. Obviously we can only test that once we've got the unit back on and uh, the, uh, the pump back on. So, we've got the unit out and we're going to actually uh, put this onto the T piece. Again, we've sealed her up.
Okay. So as you can see now we've got the unit on and uh, all we need to do now is to put the exhaust end on. So we've got the compression fitting at the end there. Now the compression fitting there, that slides into there and then we've got the through there. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to tighten that on now to the end of the unit, basic trap, and we tighten that up. You don't have to tighten it all the way up to the top, but I always do because uh, you can feel there's a, a kind of stop as soon as you get to the maximum tightness fitness. You don't need to over tighten like you don't with it, most uh, fittings. And then you can feel the deadlock there. That's enough. That's not going to go anywhere there. Okay, so we've got the uh, outlet pipe. Let me just clean that bit up. This is the outlet hose here. And obviously when the machine's on, the coolant will always be pumping through this outlet hose here. So this bit has got to be secured back into the sump. As you can see, it's just loosely secured here, just to show this. But obviously, if we cable tie it, it'll make sure it's fixed in there, because obviously if that makes an appearance and comes out, there'll be coolant everywhere. So it's important that that outlet pipe is secured inside, bit of cable tie, and tie that down. Okay, so we've also got to now connect the, um, the, out, the hose here to the vacuum cup. Okay, so the six mil uh, PU hose also has to be connected to the unit. As you can see here, it doesn't matter. The three meters is the standard kit. But on the Matsura here, we could need a slightly longer piece. So we can either get a longer piece to this, or you can just put a push fit connector either end. This can go up to 10 meters long. So we really doesn't matter. We can just put an extra piece in, connected there. Right, so that's it all connected up. We're ready to test now when they get back. And we can turn the machine on, check, check there's no uh, leaks, and uh, make sure we're uh, collecting all the coolant. Right, so we've actually teed off the system now and we're ready to check for leaks, obviously, first of all. And when the machine's put on, we should start seeing the coolant sky. So we're all sealed up, the machine is back on. We can feel the pumps back on. The actual valve is off at the moment. So we're gonna turn it on, about halfway to start with. Oh, there we go, halfway. Oh, look, look at it going out. Was that too quick? That's all it needs to be, halfway. It doesn't need to be full on. Um, and there we have the suction straight up. As soon as that's set, there's no leaks. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Obviously, if there's a leak, we have to reseal up. As you can see there, that's all tightened up and the oil coolant is going straight back out into there, then back out there. Now this wharf bin, before the pre, the coolant saver had about 40, 50 liters in uh, per uh, shift. So now it'll obviously come in the back can be put in there as soon as it comes into the bin, so it will start sucking as soon as it's in action. Okay, so we can see that the actual unit's all been installed now, check for leaks, suction is good. We've now got the vacuum cup that's been put in the fabrication that comes with it in the kit, uh, which we can supply as an option extra in the kit that fits straight into your standard bin. And there we see it there. As soon as we put it into the bin, oh, the machine's just stopped, so hold fire. When the machine's back on, obviously that's when the unit will be working is when the machine's on. So if you see it now, the machine's just about to come on. Hopefully, he says, and there it goes. Okay, so as soon as the machine's on, she's working all the time. Once it's all set on the machine, there's no need to touch it. You don't have to turn it off, on, it will just happily tick away working, and that suction will be on all the time. It doesn't matter if it's sucking up air, it doesn't matter. You see the suc suction there? Okay. So that will always be sucking. Doesn't matter if it's there, because that will just go up into the unit and then back out into the sum. So the bin comes in when it's empty. This goes straight in and it's working all the time. So as soon as that fresh coolant hits the bottom of the bin, it's straight up into the machine, saving an awful lot of coolant. See, this bin alone had about 40, 50 litres of coolant in per shift. So you can imagine how many litres that is per week, per month, per year. So it's a colossal saving in neat all saving. Um, and also it saves on the neat all cost saving and also on the disposal. That alone on a machine like that can save 1,500 to 2,000 pound a year. But environmentally, it has some super benefits. 
because we're not reprocessing good oil that goes back out into the yard. It keeps the area clean. It makes it better for the operators not having to keep refilling the machine. And it's powered, key thing, it's powered off the machine's wasted power on the pumps. So there is no external energy used to power the unit. So you've got something you're running for free, basically, and saving an awful lot of money and the environment to boot.